Hey guys, how's it going? I'm gonna show you a full guide of how to use the Insta360 Studio software in 2024. This video is mostly aimed at beginners, people who've never used this software, or anyone who's tried to use it and hasn't quite worked out what all of the features are, what all of the buttons and options are. I'm gonna take you through everything that the Studio software can do and how you can reframe your 360 videos to create some awesome effects. If you want to fast track your way to creating awesome shots with your Insta360 camera, then please check out my ultimate Insta360 video course. This course will teach you exactly how you can create up to 30 unique shots using your Insta360 camera using either the studio software or the app. So check the description if you want to become a pro with your camera. But for now, let's get into the Insta360 Studio 2024 tutorial. Let's go. Okay guys, so here we have the Insta360 Studio and the first thing you've got to do is essentially drag some files into the side here. So the files that we want to drag into the studio usually have these circular thumbnails. So if we just drag those into the studio at the side here, the left hand side panel, then all of the videos will appear and you'll see the first one displayed on the preview screen. Now immediately you can drag around this preview you, you can explore the whole 360 degrees of the video that you shot. Um, and all of your video files will be at the side of the studio software and you'll see the thumbnails there so it's very easy to pick up which one you want to edit. You can also change how these are displayed, you can have a list, you can have um, smaller thumbnails but I think the larger thumbnails makes it easy to pick out which video is which. You're also able to see some information about your file, so the size, when it was filmed, what it was filmed with. There's also a tab for favorites if you have a lot of videos at once and you want to favorite some. So, uh, you know, those are the ones you want to work on. Just click that star key and they'll end up here. You'll see at the top of the window here, there are two kind of keys. One looks like an eye. Now, this is where you switch between viewing and editing. Now, you're never really going to need to use the view. It literally just allows you to drag the image around and maybe take a screenshot. But for the majority of the time, uh, you're going to want to be on the reframe tab, which is where all of the options for doing the editing that we're going to do are. Right now, let's take a look at some of the other options and controls available in the studio software. Let's go down first to the timeline area. You see at the bottom here, this is the timeline for all of your clips. If you hover the mouse over, you can see a preview of the timeline. Just like in any other video software, click along and you'll be taken to that point in the video. And remember, because these are all 360 videos, when you drag along the preview image, you can change the, uh, the view. You can also zoom in and out by scrolling with your mouse wheel. If you want to crop some of your video, you don't maybe you don't need the start or the end, you want to crop out some of it, you can do that here by clicking on the timeline. You can use the trim keys just above that to crop the timeline trim at either the start or the end. Or you can drag along these white lines, drag and hold, and drag along the timeline and you'll be able to trim the video there as well. Okay, now let's take a look at some of the controls on the right hand side, which are basically the most important ones. These are where we're going to do the majority of the editing. You have the keyframe button, we have the deep track option, time shift, and motion ND. Now we'll go into what all of those are in a bit more detail throughout this video, but let's also take a look at these three options here on the preview screen itself. You can change to a full screen mode. You can also take a snapshot of whatever is previewed on the screen at that time. It will just take a JPEG snapshot. But probably the most important of these three keys on the actual preview itself is the ability to, cha to change the aspect ratio. You'll see here it's defaulted to 16.9. But you can change to all kinds of aspect ratios depending on what you're creating your video for. If you're creating for Instagram or TikTok, then the 916 aspect, aspect ratio, also the one to one for Instagram. For YouTube, the 16.9 will be ideal. And if you want a more cinematic effect, they also have the 235.1 aspect ratio. So, so for whatever format you're editing for, you can quickly change. So just make sure you're selecting the right one, depending on what you're actually making your video for. Let's take a look now at some of the options on the far right hand side of the studio screen. You'll see there are some icons in a kind of vertical stripe here. And these are all allow you to change some settings, change some effects, add or remove some effects. 
Let's take a look at the stabilization tab first. It's fairly self-explanatory. You can either turn the stabilization on or off. We can see here it's turned on and you can see me moving in this video and it's pretty stable. We can take a look at if we turn it off, what the difference is. And you can see it's much less stable, pretty much unusable. So you're gonna want literally every single time to have that flow state stabilization turned on. That's gonna basically what 360 cameras are best at. Now direction lock is a bit different. Um, direction lock really applies when you're turning corners. If you want the camera to turn the corners or turn with you as you did in reality, then you turn direction lock on. Direction lock is off here, so as I'm turning this corner, the camera isn't really moving. This direction is still facing this position that I've chosen in the, uh, in the studio. But if we were to turn direction lock on, which I can do right here, then you'll see as I move, as I turn the camera as I did in reality, wh whichever way the front facing lens was facing is how your video will be displayed. So it requires less reframing because the camera moves as you moved in reality, whereas with direction lock turned off, it requires you to add the keyframes, which is what we're gonna be doing a bit later. Right, next on to the stitching tab. You won't really need to worry about this unless you're using any of these extra like sticky guard lens or dive case. If you're using any of these, then you'll go into the stitching tab and select the appropriate one. You can see I'm not using them here, so it kind of messes up the stitching. But if we were, if I select normal, then it goes back to normal and you can't really see the stitching line. If you do have some stitching option uh, issues, then turning on and off dynamics, turning on dynamic stitching may help. You can also choose optical flow stitching. You can see a very slight difference here. Maybe I think optical flow improves very slightly, but because there's nothing really close to the lens in this video, it's not really that important. Next on to the media processing tab. Now, this is the only place in the studio where you can affect the color and the quality. We have some options here, color plus, which kind of adds some vibrance and some uh, saturation. You can obviously change the strength. So this could be good if you don't have any other program to add extra color in. The same with clarity plus, it kind of adds some darkness to the dark areas. I personally think Color Plus is usually the better option if you were going to choose between these. But again, it's always better to edit in Premiere Pro or a program like that. Now, Motion ND is a new option and it adds motion blur to any movement in your video. I'm going to go into this in a bit more detail later in this video. So uh, for now, you can see here it's adding motion just as I drag around, but we'll see what it looks like later. Now for um, Aqua Vision, this is basically used when, if you're using your camera underwater, remember this camera is waterproof and has a dive case, and the Aqua Vision basically makes underwater video more clear. But even out of water, it may improve the quality of your video, so check it out just in case. Now the logo setting tab is, you're not really gonna have to worry about that. I would just have it set to none. This basically just adds a logo of the nadir of your video, which, for most of the time is not gonna be necessary. You don't really need that. The project management tab allows you to have different projects for the same video. As we can see here, this is the same video, but I edited it in a completely different way, in a different aspect ratio. So you can basically have different edits for the same video in the same, um, you can switch between them very quickly so you don't have to remove all of your edits to make a different video because with 360 videos, you can make an entirely different video from the same clip. And finally, the last tab just shows you the properties of your video, and that's about it. So we're gonna go on now to look at how we can reframe our videos, which is basically what the studio is designed for. So to start reframing your videos, which is basically creating these kinds of effects that I've shown you before, button you're gonna be using most is mark a keyframe. Now what you wanna do is you wanna find a position in your video by dragging along the, the, um, the preview screen and dragging along the timeline and finding a position you want to start in. Now when you do that, you click the mark a keyframe tab and a yellow icon will appear at that moment and you'll see all of these options available. These allow you to manually control the position of your video at that point in the clip. We start off with the pan angle option which allows you to pan left and right if you drag along as you can see here. You have tilt angle, which tilts the video up and down. 
Roll angle as self-explanatory, rolls the video left and right. You can also zoom in and out. And finally, this kind of removes any warp effect or adds more of a warped effect, depending on what kind of effect you want to achieve. You also have some preset effects up here. So ultra wide, wide, linear, and this are kind of affects how the viewing angle of your video. And we have some default options here, which will, uh, I don't really use these. I think it's much better to manually adjust either using these this tab or dragging along with the mouse. So reframing is essentially clicking along the timeline, moving the video to a different position, and uh, adjusting either with those manual options or just uh, dragging with the mouse. So as you can see here, as I add another keyframe, it will instruct the studio to move between those two and we'll play back and you'll see exactly how that works. So basically the keyframes mark where I want the video to be pointing, where the camera's pointing at these moments in the timeline. The studio then follows this, it follows this direction that I've told it to in a very smooth panning motion. Now this is the most simple keyframe you can have, just moving between one point and the next. You can all, you can get very creative with how you use these keyframes. Obviously you'll be adding multiple keyframes per video, literally just pretending like you're a cameraman, like you're able to point the camera in any direction you want, but you're doing it after the video has been filmed as opposed to while you're filming it. So it gives you a lot of creative freedom. You can go back and change things. As you can see here, I'm using the manual controls now to zoom in and out and just making sure you always click that add a keyframe when you've changed something. And the studio will then just follow the path that you've laid out using those keyframes. So, we should, so I can just keep adding some here if I just want to basically look around this area, making sure the keyframes are fairly well spaced apart. But if you wanted to uh, increase the speed of the camera or the movement between each keyframe, you can do that. You can do that by adding keyframes that are closer together. The closer together your keyframes, the faster the camera movement will be. Now it's easier to add keyframes that are close together if we zoom into the timeline and we can do that here on the right hand side next to all of editing options. You'll find you have the ability to zoom in on the timeline. Now just zooming in a little bit, you can see the keyframes are much easier to deal with. And here I'm gonna add a keyframe that's much closer to the last one than I've previously shown. So you can see here I've added a keyframe that's closer together than the previous ones. And you can see here as I play back how much quicker this keyframe is gonna move. So you can see it kind of snaps quite quickly from one keyframe to another because they're close together. And if you wanted to change that, you wanted to make it slower or even faster, you can click on that yellow keyframe and you can drag it along. So I'm gonna drag it further away and it's gonna mean that the camera pans a lot slower than it did before. So there we go, we can see now the same moment in the timeline but the camera pans a lot slower. So that's essentially a very basic guide to reframing. Now this is the most simple kind of reframing you can do. As I mentioned before, I have a whole course dedicated to teaching you how to get the much more advanced effects using the studio software or using the Insta360 app. I have literally about 50 lessons teaching you how to create at least 20 or 30 different unique effects in my Insta360 video course. So if you are interested in fast tracking your way to learning all of this, then consider checking that out. Anyone who clicks on the link in this video will get the course half price. I made it super simple that anyone can pick up and learn all of these unique Insta360 effects. So if you wanted to check that out, make sure you check the link below. But we can see here some uh, a reframing I've done on a much more action oriented video, a skiing, oh no, sorry, snowboarding video. But even here, I've essentially just used the keyframes to follow the uh, the snowboarder to make sure they are in the center of the frame and then quickly turned around to show what's happening in front as well because it's a really awesome, obviously this is some awesome scenery. But let me show you one of the options that's available. If you did want to track something, a person or an object in your video, then there's a much easier way or quicker way to do it than simply using the uh, the reframing. We have the option next to the keyframe tab is deep track and that basically allows you to track an object or a person. It usually works better with a person if that person is central to the video. Just click the deep track option. It should be able to detect a person. Now click on that person as I've done here and it will start tracking. Now it does take a while. If the video is quite long, it's gonna take a few minutes 
and if something gets in between the camera and the person it may lose the tracking but most of the time it works so I think this is a really easy way if you want your camera to be focused on one thing for the whole video instead of reframing which can take a while you could just use this deep track option one feature which I mentioned earlier, which I said I'd expand upon, is Motion ND. Now this is a new feature, it basically adds motion blur to any moving video. And this can really improve the quality, or at least improve how dynamic your moving video looks. Especially a video like this, where motion blur makes your video look way better than without motion blur, I think. Now just turning motion blur on, the default options are actually a bit extreme, uh, I think. The blur in the preview isn't really how blurry it appears when you export the video, so even if it looks super blurry here, that's not exactly what it looks like in the export, but you can adjust the uh, spread and the intensity of the motion blur effect. Changing the spread will basically change the amount of the video that is blurred, as in, is it just the center or is it only the sides? I think the best option is to have these just under halfway. This tends to give the best kind of effect for fast moving video. If you want a more intense blur effect, then obviously you can raise those bars up and it will increase the intensity. But moving videos like this or action videos, I think even a little bit of motion blur is better than nothing. The final option for editing in the studio is the time shift effect. Now you can see this. Time shift is basically a fast moving video. A time shift is essentially a super sped up version of your video. It's kind of like a hyperlapse effect. It's this blurred, fast moving video and it's one of the most awesome things you can do with an Insta360 camera and it's really easy to create. If you want to apply the time shift effect, just click that lightning bolt tab and drag along the timeline where you want the time shift to be applied. You can ch then choose how much your video is sped up. It can start at by times two all the way up to time 64. Now a time 64 time lapse, you'd need to be recording for a good 15, 20 minutes just to get a uh, 30 second clip. So just be aware of how long your clip is gonna be. But these videos need to be very long for you to get these time shift effects. Another option available to you when you're reframing with the keyframes. The yellow lines between the keyframes, you can actually click on those. So hover your mouse over the yellow lines and click and you'll see some options become available. Now, this is basically how your video moves between each keyframe. Does it slip in, slip out, fade in, fade out? Does it go linear? That means no fade and no slip. So we can see here, it's easier to show you the difference rather than, rather than describe. So this is kind of a linear way of moving between keyframes. It just moves very smoothly with no change in speed. But if we select fade in, fade out, you'll see how the movement changes. It's kind of a more cinematic way, I would say, of moving between the keyframes, and a lot of people like to use this because it feels less robotic. So the final step when using the Insta360 Studio, once you've finished all of your reframing, done your editing, is to export so you can you know, upload your video to Instagram or YouTube or wherever you want. The export button is on the far right hand side, right at the bottom, that yellow square button here. Now you press that and the export settings will come up. Now you can see here, uh, there are a few things we can adjust and I really recommend actually doing some adjustments every time you export because the default options are not what you should stick with. Now, after you've chose your file name and where you want to save, the first option you should change is bitrate. Changing the bitrate can change the quality of your video and a higher bitrate can lead to higher quality video. Now, you don't need to raise it all the way to the top because it will just make your file sizes needlessly large, but a bitrate of around 80 to 100 megabits per second is recommended. You should also change the resolution from 1920, 1080 up to to 4K, which is 3840 by 2160. This will, again, boost the quality of your video. Even when you upload to YouTube or Instagram, it will just make your videos look a little sharper than if you'd have stuck to that native resolution. Now, if you want to get the absolute best quality video possible from the Insta360 Studio, then you would need to change the encoding format from H.264 to ProRes. Now this is a file format which is very, very large. It's, uh, the file sizes will be in the multiple gigabytes, but this is how you get the best quality. So if you have the space on your hard drive and you want the best quality, then this would be how you would export. 
So there we go guys, that is a tutorial on how to use the Insta360 Studio, all of the options available, all of the keys, settings, and everything really you need to know. So I hope you found that useful. Let me know if you have any questions about the Studio software, but until next time guys, I'll see you around. Bye.